Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metalholic and Metalholic Radio, and with us, of course, the voice, Ralph Sheepers of Primal Fear. How you doing, brother? Great, thank you. How are you doing over there? I am doing absolutely wonderful. It's an honor to get to speak with you again. It's been almost two years to the week since we spoke about the Unbreakable album. Here we are again with another yeah. phenomenal album about ready to drop here in another week or so, Delivering the Black. So, uh, of course, I want to talk about that. But in the interim, how have you been for the last couple of years? Busy. <laughs> but that's a good thing, though. So. Very productive, as you can hear. So we're, we're pretty quick in writing songs and and getting those albums out, which is great because we're going to bring our mu music to the people, you know? Right, right. You guys are going to the album drops on the 24th, I believe it is, 23rd, 24th, something like that. Never remember which day <laughs> of the week it is. But uh, um, And, of course, as soon as you the album comes out, you guys are hitting the road for for a short tour in Europe, I believe it is, and then, of course, Rock Meets Classic, and then here to the States, so it's going to be a huge year of touring for you. you got to, you got to be pretty excited about that. Absolutely. There's even more negotiations going on, like we do the summer festivals, and uh, then we're going to head the first time to Australia, and then it's going to be, uh, I don't know, if my 11th time for Japan, and uh, Primal Fears. I think six or seventh time. So um, yeah, it's a busy year and it's great. You know, it's uh, when you bring an album out, you want to bring the music to the people live. Right. And I remember you were hoping that you were going to get to Australia on the Unbreakable tour, and it didn't happen, unfortunately. And of course, mm -hmm. Rock Meets Classic is going to be really exciting this year. Alice Cooper this time around. So it'll be pretty Absolutely. cool to be on stage with him. Delivering yeah. the Black, my favorite album. You know. Was th at least in my top two or three favorite albums, Primal Fear, so far. It's to me. Right. I, to, I told Matt this when I talked to him last week. To me, it seems like it's a bigger, badder version of Unbreakable. Did you have any particular goals besides making an excellent album? Of course. Did you have any particular goals in mind going in? Yeah, we want to keep uh, the tempo. We want to keep the the pace of Unbreakable, and of course, increase this a little bit. As you can hear, we did that. And uh, we wanna, wanted to come back a little bit more to the earlier days, to the early album, with a, a little bit more aggression like we had, and a, a little bit of, of also of the uh, Nuclear Fire album back, uh, which doesn't mean that we're copying ourselves. It's just, you know, it's a new team work with Magnus working, Matt, Alex, and me, and composing songs. And uh, you can hear, really hear the chemistry is going well. It's not only the live playing, it's also in the studio. We found a very good way to work with each other right now. It's a great teamwork. And everybody knows uh, who he's up to, who he's listening to, his, his uh, favorite music still back then in the 80s. And uh, that's what we now do with Prime Fear with our own ideas. And it's just great how this team works together now in the studio and live. Well, and it's interesting. There's sort of that learning curve where, you know, you used to be back in the Gamma Ray days and early Primal Fear days where you would all be in the studio together writing things very organically. Now with technology, everybody's in different places using Pro Tools, which is phenomenal that, that we're able to do that. But I think there's that learning curve as you get used to how you do it individually and then put it all together as a band. And I think as you guys progress, you can hear that cohesiveness that you guys are really getting a feel for how all of you do your parts and put them together. Absolutely. You know, everybody learned on his own to work in the best way. I mean, I, I remember the days with the Emma Ray, which were not bad, and also at the beginning of Primal Fear, where everybody worked in the studio together as a great teamwork. But there were there were occasions that there were times when I thought this could have been done better for me. It's only speaking for me now, from the vocals. So I thought, mm, you know, there was in the next album, I want to improve this or that. And now the good thing is, technique-wise, that you have the tempo of the songs are already as soon as you compose them. I mean, if you do a demo and have the beats permitted, we have the tempo, then you can already send it out to the vocalist, to me. Like, I mean, Magnus and Matt are doing a lot of demos together. And then they send their stuff uh, to me and, and ask myself to, to have the, the vocal lyrics. And, of course, Matt was here in my house, and we worked on many, many lyrics and melodies together. But the thing is, then I sit back here in my studio and start to record on my own. And I'm such a perfectionist, I want to have it 100%. So I never... I never. I have a high quality gate. I don't uh, deliver things which I'm not totally satisfied with. So, and the big advantage is now that that you have the time because back in the times when you were still recording on, on, on 
tapes and also on Pro Tools already, but you were renting this phenomenal uh, expensive studios where which costs one thousand euro a day. Right. This is insane. So uh so now you have, can sit back and you have uh, I had four months time this this time for delivering the black and it was just great. You can hear the result on the album that's my, that my voice was relaxed and that I had uh, enough time in between the songs to record and to relax my voice. And that's that's the major advantage to the days when we were when we recorded, for instance, the first um, Gamma Ray album, The Heading for Tomorrow, which was a great experience too. But it was a little bit more, a little bit more of a rush, and uh, a little bit more uh, taking care of the voice time, you know. <laughs> right, absolutely, and you know, and there is something to to be said for not having that pressure of somebody standing in the other room waiting for you to do your thing, and you can sort of take it mm-hmm. when you're ready and do with it what you will, and and like you said, be a perfectionist with it. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I put myself way too much under stress on my own. So, <laughs> right. you know, as I said, I don't, I don't believe it if it's not good enough. And I also, uh, I'm working really uh, verse by verse, and and uh, not word by word. So I want to sing it. I have a I want to have a good flow in this in, in, in the things I sing. I don't want to put it together like you know. Even if you have would have the, uh, the opportunity to do that, like. Uh, playing Tetris and, you know, copying things together. Uh, pretty much changed a lot to the very first days when I worked on Pro Tools. I pretty much changed that again back to the older way of working properly singing than uh, fixing too much with words and, and pitching and stuff, you know. And it turned out phenomenally on Delivering the Black. There's some of, some of the best stuff you guys have ever done. Obviously, we've already heard When Death Comes Knock and the video's out, which is, is wonderful. And I believe the second video, I think you guys already shot it the following day, King for a Day, which kicks off the album. Excellent yes. song. So, wh- Thank you. And, and, of course, the epic piece. I know we hate to, to use that word epic, but One Night in December. <laughs> Tell us about One Night in December. Tell us about One Night in December. Well, I mean, this was a song where Matt was here, and uh, we were... Like I said, we're doing this in the teamwork, finding the lyrics together. And, um, yeah, I mean, basically, the instruments and the idea came from Matt and Magnus. They put together a great epic piece again, like you said. And I heard the demo and said, wow, guys, this is amazing. I, I really um, I can't wait to sing on it. Because if you have atmospheres going on and shivers going up and down your spine while you're singing, I mean, this is a, this is a great sign that it has to be a great song. Yeah, I mean, there's a, that is just such a big beastly piece, you know, right in the, right, oh, just past the center of the album there. And of course, you know, the first the first several songs in the album just come out with that classic metal, you know, crushing riffage and everything to get you going. So when you hit that, you're just like, wow, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna play this live as well, so everybody's looking forward to rehearse it. <laughs> Matt said, uh, you guys are gonna be playing probably half the album. Which songs yep. might we hear? He said you guys are probably going to be playing about five of them. Which ones are you guys thinking of doing? Yeah, there's even more uh, on the list, which I, I don't know if we're going to p- play, because we're going to rehearse this weekend we start, and then you find out how things are flowing. You know, It's always different if you play those things live, right. and uh, you have to find out the flow. And maybe, maybe throughout the tour, you, you add just one more song or cancel one out or whatever. But we're thinking about, of course, which we're going to play is, is, is Alive and on Fire, which is an absolute uh, beat monster. Right. And we're going to play the title track, Delivering the Black. We're going to do uh, One Night in December, like mentioned already. We're going to do the single version of When Death Comes Knocking. And maybe I'm telling too much right now. but uh, Hey, it's going to yeah, be months it's, before we get also, a chance. Also, yeah. There's still a, a lot of more surprises. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're we're all chomping at the bit, excited to see you guys. It's been a while since since we've had you over here, so... Magnus is sitting out the new tour. Uh, Tom Nauman, former former Primal Fear member, is going to be filling in, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. Nice. And, and, and um, so we can look forward to that, getting a chance to see Tom for the first time in a number of years. And Magnus, is, yep. my understanding is he's, he's sitting it out to spend time with family. And, and people forget sort of what we were talking about before the interview. Musicians have families. How do you balance your Absolutely. job with your family life? 
It's hard. I mean, I, we totally understand the situation of Magnus, which is a slightly a little bit different to uh, everybody else's situation in the band. I mean, I have one boy, and Magnus has three kids and um, a working wife and stuff. So he can, uh, we absolutely understand his situations, his situation, and um, we respect this. And then we ask Tom, our former member, as you mentioned, and he's absolutely keen on playing live uh, again with us and joining the tour bus, being the first time in the U.S. and so forth. So everybody's really happy to, to, to get him back. And uh, it's also good for the band to bring to bring a form, forming member, a founding member, sorry, a founding member of Primal Fear back into the band. And it's just, it's just a great vibe. Coming back to the question with the family, yes, it's the same here. I mean, uh, I leave my boy for four for months this year, and this is uh, pretty tough. But we all know uh, what we're doing. We have our job, which is music now. Since three years, I'm, I'm, I'm not having a job anymore. And, I mean, our major uh, duty is uh, to bring the music to the people, and it's our passion. And I think I would suffer something i would i would have a, a big hole if i couldn't do that life so it's great to stand on stage so it's it's the cocktail of adrenaline a little bit of ner uh, nervousity and uh, you know this this thing when you go on stage it's, it's you can't compare it to 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 anything else it's just a human drug which just makes you addictable to that right absolutely and we mentioned early on you guys are going to be playing Australia this year for the first time. Um, where else do you still want to tour that you haven't been able to tour yet? I mean, yeah, we're going back to Japan, like I said. And um, there's many, many uh, places. I mean, uh, Manila, whatever. Uh, these eastern uh, countries are also very, very uh, uh, interesting to tour. So uh, bring on everything, and we'll discuss it. <laughs> all right. So ha having toured all over the world, as you have already anyway, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten out on tour? Oh, yeah, that was in Japan. I can't remember what else, what I ate, but it tasted good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were yeah, there were you know, it's different. I mean, the, the strangest things is always the fast food. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is it's much more healthier than the fast food stuff, but you have to go through it. I mean, if you have to, if you have, the, the crew is going out at 4 a.m. out of the tour bus, uh, after partying a little bit and says, hey, come on, we're hungry, let's stop at the Mac, and, and everybody's going out and have something, so. <laughs> well, and I was going to ask you, you know, we're not getting we're not getting any younger here, but you're still in great shape. How do you stay so healthy? It's pretty tough. <laughs> I can feel it already now in terms of sports, so um, I lost weight because of my private stress I had with the divorce and everything, so it was a hard time for me as well, but uh, as, as you said, I try to keep the shape as good as possible. I just have this uh, thing in mind to have it as a top, also a top priority to go to the gym, which is which doesn't mean that I that I'm dragging and, and bouncing those those heavy weights. It's also having uh, the endurance nowadays. It's not only having the the power for the muscles and everything. To keep the body in a good shape is uh, Physical wise, for me as a vocalist, very important, and of course as a personal goal to keep in shape as long as I can. Absolutely. Well, and you've got to stay in shape as best you can to to pull off the touring. It that takes a lot out of the yeah. body. So, all right. And of it course, does. we were talking a little bit before about your setup and everything at home. You get you get the time to do some of this stuff now, and that probably seems to have led to a, a vast number of guest appearances in 2013. More so than any previous year, I believe, including Magnus's solo album. You'll mm -hmm. be you'll be on tour, obviously, most of 2014. But are there but are there any guest spots that uh, you can let us know about that are going to be coming up this year at all? Yes, there's going to be a band from Norway called Tomorrow's Outlook. They sent me a bunch of songs, and uh, I sang them in my studio. And there's also a project which is now already almost two years lasting uh, from a guy from from the west western side of the US the west side uh, his name is Andrew and the band the project is called Black Welder and uh, I can't sing the songs now because I'm going on tour but there's f five tracks left and uh, then you're going to hear something of that as well so there's there's things I have I, I do 
because uh, first of all, I have to like the music when I do that, of course. And uh, what what they sent me in is pretty good stuff. So I said, yes, I'm going to do that. And on the second hand, not to forget that I stopped uh, working a daytime job three years ago. I, of course, I have to look to get my fridge filled, which is not possible only with Primal Fear anymore. Right. But that's going to change after the album, I know. <laughs> it's such a phenomenal album. So, and just just for fun, a couple of things before we get out of here. I got to tell you, when when I uh, did the interview with uh, with Matt, I was playing it for my girlfriend who happened to be over, and she says, I love the way German men speak American. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any accents? Because you've been around the world. You've heard them all. Are there any accents that are particularly appealing for you? I mean, you know, it's a certain kind of erotic if people have different kind of uh, accents, of course. It's the same in German. Uh, in Germany, when the Eastern people speak German, that's it's got something special, some spice, which is uh, great, especially, of course, of course, uh, girls talking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I always try to be, maybe I'm a too much a perfectionist also with uh, my speaking, so uh, if I lose... I remember uh, I did interview interview uh, trip with Matt throughout France, and I was speaking the whole day, and I really lost concentration. I didn't really remember what I was talking about anymore, but uh, there was a translator sitting there. She really didn't know what to translate because I did I, on my own. I didn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, you have you have to, sometimes. You have to have to really switch a lot. I mean, my pronunciation might be okay, but my vocabulary sometimes uh, lacks uh, of, of words. So uh, I'm still learning. I mean, the whole life is a learning process, and uh, I'm learning until I fall down to my grave. As we all are, knowledge is power. So last question, just for fun. You guys are one of, are one of the preeminent German metal bands. But in your mind, what are the top five German metal bands? Yeah, um, of course, Primal Fear. And <laughs> there's Gamma Ray, there's Halloween. There is, oh my God, I forget. If I forget anybody right now, they're going to be all pissed. But um, except, of course, UDO. So I think there's a six already. Five. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. That is awesome. Ralph, thank you so much for taking the time. It's always an honor to speak with you. I look forward to seeing you over here on tour this year. The new album, Delivering the Black. Black. Thank you very much, Rustin. Have a nice day. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.